Well, <clears throat> it's been a long time since I have put a video up here. I actually have been developing and teaching an online art journaling class, and it evolved from some of the videos that you may have seen uh, posted in the a few months ago on my channel. So I wanted to come back and show you some of the things that I do in my art journals. I often do pages that are very layered. Um, this is one of the pages that is a key themed spread, and this comes from my art journaling class, Sparking Creativity. The information can be found on a blog post, and I'll put all the links below. The enrollment for the next session is currently closed as we start on um, Sunday in a few days. So, to give you a glimpse into my process, um, there are probably four to six layers of different things on this page, but in some areas you might be able to see what is a little bit of pencil handwriting in the background. So let me show you how that evolves. I <clears throat> have a really soft lead pencil it's all graphite, um, it's an HB, and I like it because of the feel of it on the page and because it has kind of, um, well, it's a soft lead, so it's soft edges. So I want to show you two different techniques, so I'm just going to use the lead pencil on this side here. I have a tendency to go vertically on the page because that's not how we normally write on a page. That way it becomes a little less like you're trying to see or decipher any text that's visible and more like it is just a layer and an element of the design of the piece. So it might start something like this. So very stream of consciousness and very messy. I, I basically didn't pick the pencil up at all. And just um, often this is a first layer and it has some intention about the page or some meaning behind the page. And so it's connected to the content in that way. Sometimes I leave it here. Other times... I go over it again in the opposite direction, it becomes a lot less legible. With a page like this, then the next step for me is probably to cover this a little bit, obscure this a little bit. Now, I often use gesso for that, which is really nice and opaque, but I can use acrylic paint for it as well. Thinking of it like the first layer on a canvas is sometimes an underpainting and so it can inform the decisions that we make later even though it doesn't all remain visible in the finished piece. So just dry brushing this on. It's um, a little thicker here because I wanted it to be a bit more opaque. Um, I also use this golden titan buff quite a bit because it is a nice warm neutral almost like a parchment paper and because it's so fluid I can just put some drops on the page So I would call that layer ready to dry. 
it is just something to break that white page. If you're new to the art journaling practice and you sit down with a book and it's filled with these pristine pages, they can be an obstacle to your getting started. You can stare at the page and not want to mess up. You can stare at the page and not know what to do and be stuck on trying to make a perfect page or have the right idea or the right thing that you're expressing. Sometimes it's as simple as just smearing some paint around and that can open the door and loosen you up so that it invites the muse to talk to you. This is perfect to come back to later, to draw on, to paint on, to collage over, to use more ink, to stamp or stencil. It just breaks that white page and it may be completely covered when I'm done with it. Or as you saw here, there might be some elements that peek through different layers. That's a personal choice, but it does tackle that blank page conundrum. Now using the same kind of idea with script and just laying down some handwriting, whether it's to break the page or whether it's to express an intention and be part of the page, I wanted to show you how different other materials can be. Um, this is just a regular old cadet blue crayon. So I was doing a little kind of free writing with a water theme because what I'm going to be doing next is putting watercolor over that. And this may take you right back to grade school, but the wax from the the wax from the crayon is going to resist the water that I'm about to the watercolors that I'm about to put down. So this is an indigo blue, which I love, and I knew it's um, nice and juicy and covers well. Has a good color intensity, even when it's diluted with water like this. So I can leave it at that with one smooth coat. I can just loosely kind of scumble on. Some more in other areas. And leave that to dry. So again, this in this case was more legible because I just did the one layer of writing. I didn't obscure it by going over it again in the other direction, but it gives me a lovely base color. This cool blues, um, I could have used the white crayon. I could have used an orange crayon and then the blue paint. So those complementary colors would have been a little jumpier and, and a bit more visually intense. So, two different ways to break that white page and just to dive in and get started. Sometimes that's all it takes. This page, I might be flipping through a magazine and find just the right image, collage it on, maybe some found text, and be done, and be satisfied with that. Um, however it goes, whether it is fun or serious, whether it is intense 
or a delightful distraction. Hopefully that gives you some ideas to use in your art journal.